I mean, you were 64 years old when you started the garden. In 1971. Yeah. He was a Harvard graduate. He has a de he had a degree in fine arts from Harvard. You did realize that the inception of the garden was because there were trees that were failing. You know? Yeah. So, Ruth, you actually had all the plants for a garden already in pots, well, ready to go? Of course, I bought more after that. Yes. But uh, I had a good start. You had a lot yeah. to start. What made you think? What I mean, of all the plants on God's earth, what made you think? focus on water conserving drought resistant plants. This was an idea 30 years before its time yes. in California. What made you think of it at that time well, in the 70s? I really like the plants more than thinking too much about that. I oh. like that kind of plant. <laughs> so you've always focused on drought resistant plants. Yeah. Because you like the look of yeah. them? Uh -huh. oh, how well, nice. she did have a slight bend for roses, too, I would say, and other things. Well, what I've noticed, uh, Ruth, since I've known you, I've realized that you are a great collector. Yes, I'm a collector. You started the biggest project of your life, really, the big garden when you were already 64 or 62 years old. Yes. Were you actually feeling just wonderful at that time? Did you feel yes, like... I, I felt perfectly healthy, yeah. And you, because your children yeah. were now already grown. Yeah. And you really had the time on your hands to get started on something. Yeah. And then I planted most of those things myself. Yes. Yeah. And you had the dirt, the dirt was terrible. So you had to build it up. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you mound it? How, how did you fix the, how did you uh, deal with so much soil there that had to be... Well, I don't uh, imagine that it was more than this, maybe. Do you remember what you used to build it up? Was it uh, kind of a... Well, I'd probably use compost because I was okay. always making compost. Uh -huh. I don't remember what else. Uh -huh. So this is a separate thing, but these are the original drawings done by Lester uh, for you. And so these are uh, quite a bit older. They would have been in, what, 1970 or... Oh no, they would be like from 1960. Uh, when did you actually have them done, or they might be actually dated somewhere? Yes. Yeah. You, I think you. I thought you used to grow them inside your house. No. No, you didn't. No. Okay. No, I grew them in in the uh, greenhouse. Okay. Uh -huh. And in fact, that's did did your husband build the greenhouses for you on for that reason? Uh, Did your husband have those built for you uh, for that reason? Or was that... Uh, no, they were built as greenhouses, yeah. We, we bought one uh -huh. that was uh, second hand, the first one you come to. Uh -huh. And then, uh, then we built the other two. Do you, so you have three back there? Yeah. And the folly was completely separate. That was later. Is that right? The folly? Down there? Yes. Yes. But uh, Lester Hawkins designed it with a... When you came through, a post right in the middle uh -huh. where you'd have three posts. So, you know, you just look and have to go around it. And Phil didn't like that. I didn't like it either. So uh, he, he changed that part of the design. And, uh, and when Lester came to look at it, he said, tear it down, tear it down. <laughs> he was so mad that his plans had been changed. <laughs> but they stayed changed, right? 
Huh? They stayed changed. Did did Lester get his way? No. Oh, he didn't. Good. No, it was already done, and they just left it. Okay. So this used to be the front of the house, right? Back in the day, off the road. Is, am I right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So was there like a front walk or something? There was a circular drive. Oh, okay. So it was like a circular drive off the old Bancroft Road. Yeah. Okay. And then when did that get changed around to well, the entrance to the other side? When we moved in, because I thought when the kids had dates, they'd have to come through the living room to or the kids would have to come through the living room to go upstairs. And so I changed it to the other side so they could come directly in okay. in case I have company. Oh, right. That makes sense. And that way it gave you much more gardening space, too. Yes. Yeah. Because that, that driveway, so you must have just ripped that all up and yeah. then re-landscaped the whole I've always told my friends when I recommend that they come to see your garden, I say that it's not only a botanical garden where every plant is identified, but it's landscaped. These plants aren't just in rows the way they are in... The, many botanical gardens yeah. are boring to me. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. But your garden is like a garden that was designed just for art's sake. Well, I, I try to make a picture of it. Yeah, uh -huh. because uh, just the way the winding paths and the the different the colors of uh, and the light. I mean, you didn't have any way to realize how the light would turn out on them. But that that's another thing is just the way the light goes through those grown plants. Mm -hmm. Is wonderful. And you know, the garden certainly took on a life of its own, because once Ruth started creating it, then people would, would see what she was doing and bring her plants. And so maybe yeah. they bring her, you know, a cactus. And in the beginning, cactus wasn't a great focus uh, of Ruth's, but once people started bringing cactus and she started seeing the um, amazing array of them, then it sort of crept into the composition and became part of the thing, and she then she began to collect them. And while I was here, there was group after group that would uh, get a collection, you know. There were mammal areas early on, and, uh, and then later on, gymnocleisiums, you know, they started to become more available. And when I saw a neat one, I'd bring it here, and then pretty soon there was a gymnocleisium collection, and, and so on it went, you know. As new groups um, came into uh, Ruth's view, then, then they would get their own collections, you know. And, and so, Trying those out in the garden, some did well and some did not. Mm -hmm. And so what is in the garden now is sort of a distillation of the ones that worked out of all the ones that we tried, mm -hmm. you know, and there were some that didn't, just didn't take to here. Mm -hmm. uh, one must remember with the cacti that the great majority of them do not come from winter rainfall climates. So this is really not uh, anything like where they would grow in nature. And so it's really a question of which ones can tolerate that r rainfall in the wintertime that we get without rotting. And so we've become experts at which ones <laughs> will take that by trial and error. And actually, when you say we, you mean you, really, and Ruth, the two of you. Yeah. Because you were the two that were talking with each other about it. And, and, the, and doing the collecting. Because, you know, in the early days, Ruth used to make trips every year down to Southern California with Phil fill up the station wagon with things and bring them back. But once those annual trips stopped, then uh, Ruth relied a lot on me and my journeys to Southern California to find new neat things and bring them back. Mm -hmm. And so I became sort of the, uh, the pipeline for uh, finding new things. I mean, Ruth would always order things out of catalogs and she would stay up till late at night looking through catalogs and finding neat things and writing out lists and deciding what to order. But um, there is a difference between ordering things out of a catalog and seeing things at the nursery because you see the variation in the batch of them, 
uh, you you know you have a much more complete sense of them than you do from a picture on a page in a catalog, yeah. and and so uh, and and then you meet the nursery owner and they tell you things about them and and it's infectious you know when somebody gets enthusiastic about something then you start to look at it in a new light and go wow that's pretty neat and then you want it too you know and and so uh, as I would be introduced to things and bring them back here then Ruth would incorporate them into the garden. And so there are in the garden tendencies, like the tendency is for the cacti to be at this end of the garden. The tendency is for the aloes to be farther on over and so on. And so each bed sort of has its own notion of what belongs in that bed. And uh, it's not completely fixed, but, you know, there's a flavor to each bed. Mm -hmm. And so as we go along and uh, keep these beds up, a plant dies here, a tree gets old and, and reaches the end of its lifespan there, we try to um, bring in something that keeps that feeling of that bed going forward. A garden is a dynamic thing. It's always changing. It's always growing. Things are dying. Things are getting bigger. Um, things are changing. But we try and keep that feel that that bed has. And so that's our challenge, is to uh, keep true to the bed even while all the changes are going on. So, uh, What is the biggest lesson you learned from gardening? Patience. Patience. 